Hello guys and welcome back to Let's Talk About It. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the super secretive, super powerful Illuminati. So when you hear the name Illuminati, you probably think of a shadowy secret group with highly influential members that influence the world through social media, politics and using their immense wealth. Or you may think of them as being a satanic cult that perform blood rituals and human sacrifices. Because why not? Whilst some of the rumours about the Illuminati may be true, others may be completely false or at the very least sensationalised, the Illuminati wasn't necessarily always the evil entity they're portrayed as being today. Because the group was once a very real thing. They were founded on May 1st, 1776 in Bavaria by a man named Johann Adam Weishaupt, who was a German philosopher and a professor of civil and canon law, with Weishaupt's main aim for the group being to stop religious influence over public life and to enlighten people. So as the group developed over a short period of time, they adopted symbols, things such as the all-seeing eye or the owl of Athena, which is a symbol of knowledge. They had a fairly complicated hierarchy system where members could move up the ranks from novice to Minerval to illuminated Minerva. And being a secret society, they were pretty paranoid about people discovering who they were. So they operated on a spy-like basis, using code names and secret handshakes to try and keep members' identities hidden from the public. And bizarrely, they didn't trust anyone over the age of 30 because they were too set in their ways. Whilst this original version of the Illuminati, often known as the Bavarian Illuminati, had some pretty lofty goals of world change, historians believe that they were only ever mildly influential, making them more revolutionaries than the founders of a new world order. And that lack of success, so to speak, came largely at the hands of the then Duke of Bavaria, Carl Theodore, who in 1785 made it illegal to be a member of any secret society. And if anyone was found to be a member of the Illuminati or any other group, there would be severe punishments for them. With this law now in place, and less than a decade after the Illuminati had formed, they disbanded, and over time they became nothing more than myths, nothing more than stories for people to tell at dinner parties to creep people out. But then, in the 1960s, during the Summer of Love, when a book called Principia Discordia was released, which was essentially a parody text for a parody faith called Discordanism, which basically asked readers to worship Eris, the goddess of chaos, by causing civil disobedience through hoaxes and practical jokes as a way of shaking up the world. Off the back of this text, authors Robert Anton Wilson and Kerry Thornley started to facilitate this idea by spreading contradictory or disinformation about the Illuminati. And they did this by publishing fake letters in Playboy magazine, whom Wilson was working for at the time, to make the masses, their readers, question things a little bit more, to become more enlightened or illuminated, if you will. And Wilson and Thornley were very successful in this aim, perpetuating the myth of the Illuminati's influence over the world and the power they possess. And then, of course, the conspiracy theories began. For example, it's argued that this clandestine group was responsible for the French Revolution. They organised the tragedy of 9-11 and they had people such as JFK, Tupac and Biggie assassinated. They run McDonald's and they are responsible for every single political decision that has happened around the world since May 1st, 1776. And those are just the tip of the iceberg. There are countless theories and countless conspiracies about events that the Illuminati have supposedly been involved in. And then of course comes the fact that they boast some very famous past and present members. These include people such as David Rockefeller, who is a member of one of the 13 families who collectively own 99% of the world's wealth. And it's said that when David passed away in 2017, he left behind a 
fortune estimated to be $3.3 billion. Other members apparently include the music power couple Jay-Z and Beyonce, who are said to be in high-ranking positions within the Illuminati, and they use their power and pop culture status to influence the masses. Another member, and this one is really weird, is allegedly Queen Elizabeth II. And it's said that she runs a cloning facility for the progression of a new world order. Apparently, clones can be created to be compliant, to not ask questions, and will willingly do the Illuminati's bidding no matter what it is. So, if those examples are to be believed, it shows just how wealthy, powerful, and in some cases popular members of the Illuminati really are, which is quite fitting in regards to the original attributes somebody needed to be a member of the Bavarian Illuminati, because members needed to have wealth, be from a good family, and have the consent of all other members to be able to join. And whilst these principles still apply to the modern day version of the Illuminati, there's no real link between the Bavarian Illuminati of the 18th century and the version or versions that we know of today. Because the modern day incarnation of this group seems to be far more open and brazen than you'd expect from a secret society. Which of course raises the question of why? Why would a group that is shrouded in mystery and dedicated to secrecy allow rumours of their members' identities or the events they've influenced to spread so rapidly? Well, as technology has grown, and especially with the invention of the internet, information has become so freely available and easy to access that it would be near impossible for any group, no matter the size or the power they hold, to completely stop the spread of rumours and or facts about them. So of course, what would be the best way to hide something as big as a secret society running the world from the shadows? The answer is you hide them in plain sight, which could explain why there is so much alleged Illuminati iconography and symbolism all around us. Anything from the Eye of Providence being on US banknotes to satanic or cult imagery being in music videos to being a popular namesake or subject matter for films and comics and wrestling shows to celebrities and famous people throwing up Illuminati hand gestures and greeting each other with coded handshakes. And all of these examples, and many more, are thrust into the public domain in full view of cameras to desensitise the vast majority of the general public to both the myth and the reality of the Illuminati, which allows them to freely pull the strings of influence and change without the slightest degree of resistance as they push forward towards a new world order. That is, if they haven't already achieved a new world order, because the devil's greatest trick was convincing the world that he doesn't exist. Well guys, that brings me to the end of another video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd love a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, leave your comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you next time.